Our devotion for today, as we continue in our focus on access to God, our scripture text for today will come from Matthew chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. And the scripture reads, And when you are praying, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they suppose that they will be heard for their many words. So do not, do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. I want to tag this, this devotion, how to get a prayer through. This particular text comes from the Sermon on the Mount uh, that's recorded in Matthew's Gospel, chapters five, five through seven. And our verse for today focuses more on how to get a prayer through. Jesus is addressing some of the misconceptions of how to get a prayer through. Uh, and he bases this on what the people have seen and what they've heard. But what he says to them is, when you pray, don't do like they do. Uh, in, in verses, uh, in verse, starting back at verse 5, he talks about the religious leaders who like to stand in the synagogues and on street corners and pray their elaborate prayers so that people will be impressed by how well they pray. Jesus said, don't pray like that. In verse 6 and verse 7, in verse 6 and 7, he, he says, when you pray, go to a quiet place, go to a secret place, go into your room, close the door so that you can have a private conversation where it's just you and God. So what, what he's saying there is that in our relationship with God, our conversations should not be for public consumption. Uh, even, if, even if you're praying, say, in a prayer meeting, your, prayer should, your conversation should not be for the audience. Your conversation is with God. So he said, go to a, a quiet place, a place alone where you can be alone with God. And, and talk to him. He, he mentions the Gentiles in, in verse 7. He says, Don't, and when you pray, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they suppose that they will be heard for their many words. The issue that he's addressing here uh, is that the, the Gentiles, most of them were pagan worshipers. They prayed to gods that were not really gods. They prayed to gods that were made of wood or stone, who had eyes that could not see, who had ears that could not hear, and who were absolutely powerless to respond to their prayers. So what they did, they, took, they repeated a lot of words and phrases that they had been taught, that they had memorized, and they did long meditations, and the people were accustomed to seeing them in their long, drawn-out meditations where they would just repeat the same words and phrases over and over, the same chantings and incantations, thinking that if they pray long enough and loudly enough and intensely enough that their God, who was really not a God, would eventually hear them and respond. But Jesus reminds us that, that he has given, through our faith in him, he has given us access to our Father who is in heaven. So, and, he, and he reminds us that we pray to the true and living God. And so we don't have to do that. We don't have to try to impress God with our prayers. Uh, we don't have to impress God with our repetitious words. We don't have to spend hours and hours repeating the same things over and over again. Uh, because I, we have a God who inclines his ear to the voice of our supplications. And so what Jesus says, don't, don't do that. I'm reminded of uh, a song that the Faith Kids Choir used to sing. God hears me when I pray. And the words of the song, the, the, the conclusion, uh, the message of that song, the children say, God sees me. 
He knows my voice and he hears me when I pray. Now, if you think about it, when children pray, they don't use a lot of elaborate phrases. They don't use a lot of uh, big words. The only memorized things that uh, I, I guess you could say that, that, I, that the children use when they pray, they always start their prayer off with, will you bow your heads and close your eyes? And then they say, Lord, I just want to thank you for all of the things that you do for us and how well you take care of us. And from that point on, the prayer that you hear from children are the words that, they're in, that are in their hearts. They use their own words. They don't use a lot of elaborate words. They use the words, their own words to describe what's in their hearts. Now, when we pray, Jesus is not saying your prayer has to be short. But what he's saying is pray from your heart. Just as our children do, they pray directly from their hearts, sharing with God those things that, 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 that they want to uh, pray about. Let me give an illustration. You remember when Peter was uh, walking on the water to meet Jesus? And he got distracted by the winds and the waves. Peter got a prayer through in three words. Lord, save me. And the Bible says that Jesus reached forth his hand, lifted Peter out of the water, and they walked back to the boat together. Can you imagine how that scene would have been played out so differently if Peter had started his prayer off by reciting all of the scriptures that he knew about God's control over the winds and the waves. Glub, glub, glub. But instead, he prayed, Lord, save me. And that's what Jesus is saying. We don't have to use a lot of repetitious phrases or memorized prayers. All we have to do is speak to God from our hearts in that quiet place where it's just him and us, and he will hear us. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you so much for the privilege of prayer. We thank you, God, that you incline your ear to hear the voice of our supplication because you see us, you know our voice, and you know what we need even before we ask. So we ask God in the name of Jesus that you would help us in our prayer life by the power of your spirit at work in us and teach us to be mindful that you are loving God and we are your dear children. And so we thank you even right now for hearing and answering our prayers in the name of Jesus we pray, amen.